you'd rather have something else. No, no, coffee's fine, thanks. You're being so nice about this, considering I just rammed into the back of your car. Oh, well, listen, don't worry about it. It was just a little dent. I look, you can hardly see it from up here. Well, I can still see it. Uh, maybe if we went up on the roof, I... Yeah. <laughs> listen, the whole thing was partly my fault, too, probably. I mean, if I'd been looking in the rearview mirror, I, I would have seen you coming and taken off faster. <laughs> Mary, would it be all right with you if you got your car fixed and just gave me the bill? Well, yeah, but uh, don't you want your insurance company to pay it? Oh, I'd love them to. But I had a claim a few months ago, and right after that, they raised my rates again. Oh, would you... somebody else? <laughs> I'm afraid so. I seem to have this habit of fastening my seatbelt while I'm driving. <laughs> like, like just a few minutes ago, I was reaching to fasten it, and I just looked down for a second, and then I looked up and... There you were. <laughs> that may be a first in automotive history. You know that? An accident caused by seatbelts? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you have really done fantastic things with this apartment. Yeah, thank you. Are you a decorator? No, no, I work in the newsroom at WJM TV. Oh, what do you do there? I'm an associate producer of the news. What does an associate producer do, anyway? Uh, well, it, it involves, um, a lot of associating. Mary, Mary, do you, do you know what happened to your car? <laughs> it's terrible. Some idiot rear-ended you, right? Oh, wow. Rhoda, it, it, it wasn't some, uh, it was actually, uh, Joanne Forbes, uh, this is Rhoda Morgenstern. You mean she's the, uh... Uh-huh. <laughs> Nothing. I just thought if I started laughing, you two might join in. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hey, would you like some coffee? No, thanks, Mayor. You know what? You two have a lot in common. Rhoda's in charge of window decorating at Hempel's department store, and Joanne here is a buyer for Noblis Wilson. No kidding. Ooh, yeah. That's a good store. I saw a scarf there I really wanted to buy, but I figured I looked pretty weird walking around naked in this great-looking scarf. <laughs> check out your window displays, and they're always really terrific. Mm. Not like ours. Of course, on the budget they give me, I have to do mine with the uh, crepe paper and balloons. Oh, yeah. Will you stop putting yourself down? Your windows are great, too. Well, not really. <laughs> Mary, hmm? I know you're an animal lover, but this is ridiculous. The Gopher magazine? <laughs> <laughs> That's my alumni magazine, University of Minnesota. Oh, did you go there? Yeah, just for two years. What house were you in? House? Oh, you mean sorority house. Oh, I, I was a Gamma Gamma Delta. Oh, gee, that sounds funny to say after all these years. <laughs> gamma Gamma Delta. <laughs> Isn't that the wildest coincidence? I was a GGD at Northwestern. You're kidding. No. I was <laughs> in the shock end. <laughs> the what? The shock end. The lady's auxiliary to my neighborhood gang. <laughs> Listen, when you were pinned by a shark, that meant to the wall. <laughs> well, I'll let you two uh, sorority sisters uh, alone for now. I guess you want to munch grape leaves and chat some Greek. Right? Oh, come on. You don't have to go. <laughs> yeah, I do, Mayor. I got this letter I have to write. My mother sent me a photostat of an airline ticket and told me she'd use it if she doesn't hear from me. <laughs> nice meeting you, Joanne. You too. Hey, listen, Mayor, if I ever finish this letter to my mother, you want to play some tennis? Yeah, terrific. Good. Okay, bye-bye. See you later. Hey, you play tennis. No. Uh, but she just uh, said... Well, Rhoda and I just climbed the fence of the high school and sort of bat the ball around, but I'm really awful. <laughs> oh, we sound perfectly matched. Would you like to play tomorrow? Well, okay, all right. But I gotta warn you, Rhoda and I have been sort of making up our own rules as we go along. <laughs> Oh, like what? Well, for one thing, we don't play with a net. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll play tomorrow. All right. <laughs> Unless I wake up with whiplash. Mm. <laughs> Kidding. Mm. <laughs> hey! Hey! Lou Grant, she's not here right now. Joanne? All right, I'll tell you a call. Uh, hold on a second. Okay, shoot. Five, 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 
4200. Extension 2413. Ah, it's a pleasure. Where have you been? Oh, in the film library, hmm? checking on the footage you asked me about. Hmm? What's wrong? Nothing. Nothing's wrong. I enjoy being your personal secretary. I got a call. No, you didn't get a call. You got two calls. Two personal calls. Somebody named Joanne and somebody named Rhoda. What have you been doing? Well, I was just, uh, men's room, Lou. <laughs> Everybody's got more important things to do around here than work. Um, What's the matter with him? Oh, come on, Marie. You should know by now that hollering is just his way of showing affection. Well, it's a good thing he doesn't like us more or he'd tear us apart. Extension 2413, please. You call one of your friends? Mr. Grant, I haven't taken my coffee break yet. <laughs> When I started in news, nobody took a coffee break. We didn't stop working to drink coffee. We drank coffee while we worked. We were newsmen. We were proud. We wore our hats in the office. Mr. Grant, would you like me to start wearing a hat in the office? Of course, please. You know why we wore our hats in the office? Because it was a good place to keep your press cards? Because when that phone rang, we had to go. We didn't have time to put on our hats. You people, but... Hello, Joanne. Hi, it's Mary. <laughs> oh, when you called? That was my boss. Yeah, I guess you could say he's kind of cute. <laughs> Lunch today? Yeah, great. All right, fine. I'll meet you there at, uh, what, 12.30? Terrific. See you then. Bye-bye. Say, Mary, you know what Lou wanted to see me about? Oh, yeah, probably about the way you've been using the copying machine. Yeah, I want to talk to him about that. What's wrong with that darn machine, anyway? Well, nothing that I know of. Well, I thought I'd save some money, so I took one of my fan pictures and ran off 50 copies. <laughs> Didn't come out too good. But, Ted, you can't use that machine to copy a photograph. You telling me? Let's see, Ted. Uh, why didn't you put your face in the machine? I tried that, but my nose came out squashed flat. Now well, these aren't much good. Are you going to throw those away? Oh, yeah. Well, look, Ted, before you do, may I have one of your pictures? <laughs> well, sure. Kind of surprised you want one, though. <laughs> Thanks, Ted. Go to Morgan Stern, please. Hi, Rhoda. Mary. Lunch today? Uh, gee, I can't. I've already got something for lunch. No, I'm not going out with the guys. No, it's, it's not a date thing. It's just a lunch thing. <laughs> Listen, I'll, I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye-bye. That was fast. What happened? He's docking me for the copying machine costs. <laughs> well, you'll just have to pass the charges on to your loyal public. Hey, that's a good idea, Murr. <laughs> I get the kids to pay for it. They could color them in. <laughs> Thanks, Bert. Well, would you like a Diet Cola? No, I'd uh, like a chocolate milkshake. Uh-huh. But I'll have a Diet Cola. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that last shot you made down the right sideline really surprised me. Yeah? Kind of surprised me, too. I was aiming for the left sideline. <laughs> Listen, maybe it's your racket, Mary. You ought to get one of these metal ones. Yeah, I'd like to, but I don't think I can afford it. Hey, one of the guys I date is the pro at the club. This racket usually sells for $30. He let me have it for $25, so I save $5. Hmm. On the other hand, I could save $25 if I keep my old wooden one. <laughs> anyway, it's sort of a family heirloom. My grandmother used to beat rugs with it. <laughs> Did you uh, notice my car when you parked? Yeah, it looks terrific. You can never tell where I hit you. Yeah, only thing that's left is the bill, $110. But that little scratch? Well, it was sort of a, a deep little scratch. <laughs> oh, well, listen, Mary, remind me to give you a check for it. Yeah, I will. No hurry, though. Hi. Do you have any old blanket I could borrow? Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> Lars and I are taking Bess on a picnic. I'm sorry, I didn't know you had company. Oh, uh, Joanne Forbes, this is Phyllis Lindstrom. Happy to meet you. Joanne, 
The buyer. That's right. Oh, I know all about you. Oh, it must be fascinating traveling all over the world, buying clothes in all those exotic places. Well, the most exotic place I go to is the garment district in New York. <laughs> it must be fascinating traveling to the garment district in New York. Oh, who won the tennis match? Oh, Joanne did. No contest. Two sets in a row. Isn't she a wonderful sport? Mary, you're a wonderful sport. I've beaten her in almost every game we've ever played, and she never loses her temper. She's a wonderful loser. Mary, you're such a good loser. That's because I've had so much practice. Well, where'd you play? The school? No, we went to the Lakefront Tennis Club. Well, I'll see if I can find that old blanket for you. You belong to the, to the Lakefront Tennis Club? Well, actually, uh... My ex-husband belonged. I got his membership as part of the settlement. Oh. Well, maybe you've seen him, Mary. He plays down at the high school now all the time. Oh, yeah? Is he uh, sort of tall, uh, sandy hair, great looking? That's him. Yeah, I see him there all the time. Boy, he sure plays a lot. Mm-hmm. He played even more when we were married. <laughs> One day, when he was out playing, I found his racket at home. <laughs> oh. I keep telling Lars we should join a club like that. It would be so nice for Beth. That's our daughter. And uh, it would give us a chance to meet some interesting people. So many of our friends seem to be dermatologists. <laughs> Well, why don't you come over sometime? We'll play doubles. Oh, I'd love to. How thoughtful. Here's your blanket. Thank you, Mary. Mary? Hmm? Lars and I can't use our tickets to the symphony this afternoon, and I was going to give them to you and Rhoda, but, um, this is much better. Well, would you like to go? Well, that sounds like fun. I haven't been to the symphony since... You want a confession? I've never been to the symphony. Well, well what do you say we try it, then? Great. I'll go shower, change, and, uh, I'll be back at two, okay? Great. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I hope I see you again. Oh, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Mary, she's a lovely girl. The two of you just, just look as if you should be friends, not like, you know, you and that. Hiya! Mary, what is that you're wearing? You look like a cheerleader for a school of nursing. <laughs> it is a tennis outfit that I bought. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with dressing correctly, Rhoda. <laughs> You think I don't know that? I dressed up just to come down here. Changing your sweat socks isn't dressing up. <laughs> Mia, didn't you feel a little self-conscious climbing over the schoolyard fence looking like Princess Grace? Oh, well, we didn't play at the school. Oh. Joanne yeah. took her to the tennis club. Mm, the tennis club. I bet when you climb the fence there, they have people to give you a boost. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, hurry up and change. We gotta go look for my new tires. Mm. Oh, Rhoda, I can't go. What do you mean you can't go? What she's saying is, she can't go. Thank you, Eric Severide, for that analysis of what she just said. Well, Rhoda, this, the, the tire thing wasn't definite. Well, that's okay, ma'am. If you got something better to do, just say so. Well, no, it's not a, a question of better or worse. Yes, it is. A date is definitely better than browsing through used tire lots. So is going to the symphony. Oh, the symphony? Rhoda, look, I'm sorry. I completely forgot about the tire thing, and Phyllis did have these tickets to the symphony, so, uh, Joanne and I are going. Oh. <clears throat> Joanne, huh? Well, uh, that's great. You can wear your uh, tennis outfit and jump over the orchestra pit to congratulate the conductor. <laughs> Rhoda, you don't have to be sarcastic. I just wish you'd told me that you were such a classical music fan, I'm Mary. not! Because I would have promised to hum Beethoven to you as we slept among the recaps. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> Stern, please. Hello, Rhoda. It's Mary, and don't hang up. Well, I don't know. I just thought maybe you wouldn't want to talk to me. Hey, listen, Rhoda. You and I have been friends for too long to be mad at each other over something silly. Oh, good. I'm glad you feel that way, too. What, lunch today? 
Well, gee, I'd love to, really, but I can't. Mr. Grant's expecting a man in from Washington, and since he's not going to be here, he asked me if I would stay and sort of show him around. <laughs> no, it is not Henry Kissinger. <laughs> okay, I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Hi, Mary. Joanne! Well, come on in. What are you doing here? Well, I just thought I'd drop in and see if you want to have lunch at the club. They're having a tournament we can watch while we're eating. If you don't mind picking a tennis ball out of your soup occasionally. <laughs> oh, that sounds like fun, but I can't. I've got to stay here. Oh, that's too bad. A lot of great-looking guys have lunch there. Uh -huh. Oh, you were uh, talking about Antonio's? You're right. I just had lunch there. <laughs> well, no, Ted, we're talking about a tennis club. Oh, I must go there sometime. <laughs> Hi there. Ted Baxter? Oh, I'm sorry, Joanne Forbes. This is indeed Ted Baxter. Hi. Am I mistaken, or did I see a crazy little magical thing happen when we made eye contact? There? Well, I, I don't know, uh, did it? Oh, I thought I saw a sudden glint in your eye there. Uh, well, that's probably because I wear contact lenses. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Well, uh, you ever watch my show? I'm the anchorman on the 6 o'clock news, you know. Oh, I'm afraid I'm never home in time to watch at 6. Oh, well, you could see some of my tapes. I could take you down to the, uh, technical place. <laughs> and we could uh, see them through the, uh, thing. <laughs> well, I I'd really like that, but I've got to get going soon. Okay, then I'll watch them myself. <laughs> Hurry that guy from Washington get here yet? Oh, no, Mr. Grant. Oh, Lou, not enough people are watching me at 6 o'clock. Maybe I should be on later. <laughs> Good idea. How about a half hour after the Star Spangled Banner? <laughs> I'll be down at the technical place, Mayor. <laughs> They just raised property taxes again. Boy, is Ted ever going to give a blistering editorial on this tonight. Why should Ted care? He rents an apartment. But I own a house. <laughs> this must be such a fun place to work. Everything you're involved in is so important. Mary, my ice bucket's empty. <laughs> oh, well, the uh, freezer is uh, broken again, Mr. Grant. They're sending some ice over from the liquor store. Well, they'd better hurry. Uh, since I got back early, I can take care of that guy from Washington, so you can go to lunch if you want. Yes, sir. Does she work here? No. And she can go to lunch, too. <laughs> now you have to come with me. Okay, that's fine with me. Murray, I will be back in about an hour. I'm going to have lunch with Joanne at the tennis club. Hey, do you hear me? Lunch, Joanne, club, enjoy. You have your car here? Yeah. Oh, listen, by the way, the second bill from the body shop came today. Oh, yeah, remind me to give you a check for it. Yeah. Newsroom slaughter. Oh, hi, Rhoda. Uh, no, she just left for lunch with a friend. Uh, Joanne something. Uh, do you want me to take a message? <laughs> I can't give her that message. <laughs> Hard to play doubles with three people. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't I play on the side of the best player and be your handicap? <laughs> well, it's more fun with a fourth player. And since Sally's out in the car, I was thinking... Oh, that... listen. Uh, as long as you mention the subject of cars... Oh, right. I got my checkbook right here. Just remind me. Well, anyway, I thought your friend, uh, what's her name, uh, might like to play with this. Oh, Rhoda. Uh, no, the other one. Phyllis? Phyllis. Well, uh, Phyllis and her husband are away for the weekend, but... Um... Gee, I think Rhoda would love to play with us. I'll call her. Uh, well, Mary, does she play well enough to keep up with us? She plays about the same as I do. Oh, yes, but Mary, you've been playing a lot lately. You've really improved. Hey, have I? Yes, you're much better. Look, maybe we can find a fourth at the club. Yeah, but I tell you, Rhoda is just, you know, she's a, like, a natural athlete. <laughs> She'll make a great fourth. Well, okay, then. Uh, Mary... Does she have the right clothes to wear? I mean, I wouldn't want her to feel out of place if she didn't have the right clothes. Well, I, I think she can probably find... Uh... Hey, 
Hey, Joanne, why don't you want Rhoda to play with us? Well, oh, it's not that I don't want her to play. It's just that some of the people at the club aren't as well liberal as you and I are. Liberal? You mean because she's Jewish? Oh, listen, Mary, it's not me. It's just the rule. I mean, if it were up to me, I'd let Jewish people in. Oh, good. Oh, Joanne, I can't tell you how glad I am to hear that. <laughs> because I would hate to think that you have anything against me. Why would I? Well, I'm Jewish. <laughs> listen, I thought you knew that. that. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you think oh. of all the times you took me to that club <laughs> and nobody knew. <laughs> Oh, come on. You're putting me on, aren't you? Oh, no. Listen, would I kid about something like that? <laughs> but you, you don't look... Don't what? Uh, well, um, act. Well, I mean, you have to admit... Joanne, I'm not certain... Jewish. I knew that. Didn't you think I knew that? <laughs> no, I don't think you knew that. I think for a minute there, you weren't sure, and it made a difference. Well, it did not. Oh, come on, Mary. Let's play tennis. No, Lizzie, you go ahead and play uh, singles with Sally. Well, okay, if, if you don't want to. Uh, well, I, you know, I better get going. Sally's down in the car waiting. Oh, listen, uh, speaking of cars, you asked me to remind you about the check for mine. Oh, yes, Mary, be sure and remind me. I am reminding you. Y you mean now? Please. Okay, sure, sure. Uh, that was 105, right? 10. 10. Look, Mary, I know you think I'm a bigot, but I'm not, really. It's just that I've always kind of traveled in my own circle of friends, and I just never had a chance to know any Jewish people very well. Even in the garment center? I met socially. Well, if you ever feel you want to know one better, boy, I know a real good one. Oh, fine, fine. Let's do that sometime. But not now. Well, no, not now, see, because I've really got to go. I tell you what, we'll have lunch one day soon. You, me, and Rhoda, okay? Bye. needs work, but come on in anyway. <laughs> Hi. How are you? Play tennis? No. No, I was, uh, just, uh, wondering if you were doing anything. Just writing my mother. Again? Still. I've been working on this letter for over a week now. You want to hear what I got so far? Yeah. Dear Mom, <laughs> That's it? I thought it was a pretty good start. <laughs> well, listen, if you ever uh, finish that letter, would you like to see a movie or something? Yeah, that would be fine. Okay. Anything in particular that you want to see? No, no. Any movie you want to see is fine with me. Rhoda, aren't you going to say anything at all about what happened between us? It crossed my mind. <laughs> so why don't you? I decided it would bug you more if I didn't. <laughs> right. <laughs>